spirit of not taking Amon Ross St. Brown for granted, as, as Dan kind of talked about earlier this year, just w where is he better this year than he was last? Well, uh, uh, you hate to say a lot of places, but he is just in yeah. terms of uh, um, knowledge of the game. Obviously, going in, you know, going to your third, it's, it's a different deal, a better understanding of where I need to be, how I need to get there. Uh, and it's showing up. It's really showed up this past week. Uh, I think he only had four or five catches, but just being where he was, even at the fourth down play at the end of the game, last year he would have came in and ran out of that and went right to the corner. He came out and kind of sat in a hole and waited for the ball. So those were things he's just been growing uh, a whole lot with. And then uh, he's playing faster, so uh, which is uh, – not that he was slow by any means, but we always, how can we take advantage and get faster? How can we be faster in the wide receiver room um, and use our speed to our advantage? What do you mean? Uh, you mean, explain what you mean by playing faster. Just playing like, faster. So to understand, once, once you understand what you're doing, how quick can I get from point A to point B, time of the quarterback? Like we're, we run routes based on the defensive line. Like forget the corner. How fast can we get to our route so the defense line don't get to our quarterback? Yeah, we got great protection in the line that we've had. They've been doing great. But it's like how fast can we get to our, to point B, from point A to point B, uh, and be available for the quarterback and get the ball out of his hands? So we're always running our routes, you know, knowing that these D linemen are teeing off and trying to get to our quarterback. It doesn't always translate like the fastest guys aren't always. No, it doesn't always translate. Uh, because a, a lot of times it's just they don't, they don't quite understand it. It can be an issue or they don't fully trust it in terms of getting to the spot and the ball's going to be there. They may feel like, hey, I came off too early. Nope, you just got to go. Uh, so we teach that over and over again so that they get it, and he's been able to grasp it and has been playing uh, a whole lot faster than, uh, I won't say a whole lot faster, but you can see it's faster than year one and year two. Uh, <laughs> we watched a clip yesterday about certain plays we were trying to put in, and uh, <laughs> we put the clip up. It was a, a young St. Brown. It was weird to see him out there, just not lining up right, kind of, you know. <laughs> it, it, was, it was different. Uh, but you can see the growth for sure. So. Obviously, you got back. You know, that was one of the things that Coach Campbell said. back? <laughs> 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 you know, he wanted them just to be a reliable guy. You know what I mean? Lining up right, getting them right. I guess, what have you, you haven't had a chance to see him much since he's been back, but coming back, I mean, just where is, where is he at as far as, you know, his – Taking the time off and just, right. what are you expecting him in this way? I'm expecting him to know it. You've been off, like, get in here and know it. Like, you had time to study, you know. Um, and that's what I, I would I, I would venture is what's going to show up for him in terms of being where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. Uh, now, when that takes place in terms of him playing, we, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, but he's got to get his legs under him and all that stuff, and we'll see uh, what it leads to. What were you allowed to do with him during special? That's it. <laughs> no, I couldn't even call him. It was the worst thing. They need to change that. Like you got a young kid, young player. Like it's, the suspension is enough, but you can't even communicate with him. Like that's like, that's like, that's bad. So what was it like when you sort of get reunited with him? So oh, it was great. It was kind of, It wasn't kind of like when he got drafted. Uh, but he was in the hall. He's like, Coach Al! And he was just excited. <laughs> so we chopped it up. It was real good. It's good to have him back. What is the upside on, obviously, the offense has been clicking along pretty well without him, but does it become kind of tantalizing when you think and you talk with Ben about what this offense can be if he really gets going? And, and how do you also measure for him not putting pressure on himself, but just kind of taking it a step at a time to be part of it, fit, fit in? Uh, yeah, we welcome the pressure, meaning that helps them grow uh, from that standpoint. Like, if we're not putting pressure on them, if it's not pressure, then it's like, ah, this is a cakewalk. We want some of that pressure, and it's good pressure uh, from that standpoint. But we know our offense um, and putting him back in the mix, how much further we can go. Um, and again, not again, I always uh, make sure everybody understand the humbleness part of it. Like, it's not that he's the... Uh, fix all, be all from that standpoint, but he brings a different element that, you know, us and many other teams don't have <laughs> just in terms of his speed and the way he runs down the field. Um, uh, so it, it certainly translates, you know, over to the game and, and is certainly going to help us. And again, it's just back to how, how do we, you know, how quick can we get them ready to, uh, to be able to get on the field. Can you explain that just a little bit? Because we always say that, right? Like that 
the field stretching ability, the vertical yeah. ability, what that does for everyone else. I don't know if you've played in offenses that had someone comparable, but how that, you know, uh, sort of. Mike Wallace, this. when I played back in, like, dudes just, just, that's, that can just run. Um, and if you're the safety in the corner, you can't blink because it, the, the faster they get on you, like, the, the deeper you got to get out. And now it just open up lanes for everybody else. And if you don't get back, then ball's up, it's over the top, you know, and you know, it's six points. Um, and it's not just the, the deep ball. It's, hey, I can catch a short, a shallow route and hit a seam, and they got to catch me. And i never forget Mike Wallace. Uh, he was the same way. He caught a shallow route and took it 60 yards, and it was just like, what? Like, what happened? Because it, it just happened so fast. And that's the, that's the way I see him from that standpoint in terms of uh, his speed and being able to use it. Um, you know, so we'll get there. Miami's uh, fast motion is not new in the NFL, but maybe they're using it more than we've seen other teams use it in recent years. Mm -hmm. um, when you have guys with, with speed on your roster that you do, do you, do you look at what they're doing and, and maybe see if there's yeah, elements from tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, that's from us. Um, but no, we, uh, um, like, uh, Khalif does that for us. Uh, and it's not every, it's not just about being fast. You had to be quick to be able to turn the corner to, to make those turns. So it's not for everybody to be able to do. Um, uh, so Leaf is one that can do it. Uh, I know you have seen Saint do it. So it's just a matter of, I think it's really about the quickness. Because <laughs> you can be fast, but if you can't put your foot in the ground and turn to get vertical, then now you just, it takes you forever to turn and you can't really get to where you need to be in the time. And like I said, as it relates to getting down the field uh, before the D-line gets to the quarterback, really is all off from that standpoint. So it doesn't work for everybody, but um, that's, that's something we've done and, you know, not sure if that's something we do with J-Mo yet. I don't know. You know he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's got some long strides now. So, How does J-Mo's speed stack up against other guys you've been around? Um, again, fastest guys I play with, Mike Wallace, like four or two guys that can just, I mean, run. Um, and his thing with him, he can stop, you know. A lot of guys who run that fast are not able to stop. So it's, uh, it's good to have them, you know. Uh, that's one of the things, obviously, when we draft them, like this dude can run. You know, he can run, he can track it, so it's all good. Before his suspension, uh, did you leave him with anything in particular that you wanted him to get better at outside of getting right hamstring? Of course. Care to share? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Marvin Jones had kind of a rough opener to the season. And, yeah. You know, I think everybody was kind of looking for him to bounce back, and that opportunity maybe hasn't come through these right. next three games. Um, is there a reason maybe it's it's not clicking with the, the veteran? Uh, I mean, it's clicking. It's just the opportunity. Like, um, yeah, like I, I, I can't say enough about Marv and what he's bringing to the table for us uh, on the field, not even on the field, not just on the field, but in the room too. So, uh been that 12 year veteran, I can be explaining something. And some of the young guys are like, nah, coach, I don't see it like that. And then Marv says something, it's like, oh, okay. They get it. So, um, but Marv will be fine. You know, he'll, he'll bounce, bounce back more and more. That first game was a little like, ah, for him from that standpoint. I think he had a drop or two drop, I think, he had, and he had the turnover. Um, so that was not what he was used to from the standpoint um, in terms of his play. Uh, so now it's just an opportunity coming his way, you know, being able to make the plays. And certainly, um, we got a long season. We need every guy, yeah. every guy. So that's the way it works. He has seen the snap count, you know, reduce yeah. each game, the first four. And now, you know, J-Mo's entering the picture and Antoine's getting a little bit more of the piece of pie. Is, is the opportunity going to be there outside of, you know, I guess somebody getting banged up and creating that window for Yeah, the opportunity is going to be there. And the reason is, like, guys run different things, like, um, it's certain things I wouldn't put j on that I would put Marv on and vice versa. Um, it's certain things I, you, you would think I can put everything, Saint on everything and, and he would think so as well. <laughs> um, but we just, we just don't, you know, it's like, ah, you know, give it to Marv or give it to, you know, it's somebody else who runs. So that's, that's the way we work it uh, from that standpoint. And if it fits, it fits. If not, we don't run it, you know, from that standpoint. Uh, and it fits for our guys. We try to put our guys in the best position to be able to make the play. Coach, you know, at this point, stage in his career, especially with golf and that, that background, just mm. talk about him a little bit, what he's been able to provide for his team. Yes. Um, I mean, just showing up game after game, big play after big play. Um, and it, it, it has a lot to do with his offseason, the way he prepared. Uh, 
we worked on several different things. Um, and one of the big things we worked on the offseason was his ball security in terms of, and, and people say, well, ball security, yeah, but he's catching the ball like crazy. Yeah, but he catched the ball last year like crazy, but it was always like, oh, that ball's kind of out a little bit. But he's been working on that, and it shows up, like, and just in terms of him protecting it. Um, and then the verticalness that he's bringing down the field, even this past week, uh, that catch that he had, just tracking his eyes. We always say catch the ball with your eyes. Like, if you can't see it, you can't catch it. Um, and he did a great job in terms of tracking it all the way to the one hand that he had as the defender held the other hand or the other arm and then uh, got it loose to be able to uh, bring the ball in. Uh, so I can't say enough about his effort, not just in the pass game, but you can see even the run game. He's been, you know, uh, doing some great things in terms of blocking for us. Last one for Jed. Jared has been, or the offense, I should say, has been really proficient in spreading the ball around, mm -hmm. finding a lot of different targets. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, as we know, with great athletes, everybody wants the ball. How is it, where does it come from, the ability to kind of manage and make sure that everybody has just maintained the happy as the team goes? Yeah. When I get a ball, I get a ball, and, and nobody's seemingly having problems with not getting the ball. I mean, it's a team. That's really what it is. Like, don't get me wrong, we, we uh, sit down and come up with plays for each one of them, you know. We want to run this well who fits in this spot and that spot uh but at the end of the day they could give you a different coverage and it goes to somebody else and it's still a big game well who cares like the team wins the team moves forward and everybody understands that you know um so you got some guys come out of the game with four catches some guys come out of the game with no catches but they were tagged for that play it just didn't work out just in terms of the coverage or jerry got flushed out of the pocket ended up going somewhere else that's just the way it works um, but everybody stays on board and, and understands, like, that's part of being a team. Like, uh, you get six catches and I get one, like, it's part of it. Because next week, guess what? I'm going to have a six, you had a one. You know, that's just how it is. So, but, but that's why you got to be humble. Even if you are catching the six balls week in and week out, because um, it'll be a time where, you know, you don't, you don't catch as many. Uh, so some humble pie we all got to have and to keep our team together moving forward.